Today I want to ask you to turn to Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. moment to find that. Give Jake a moment to find that. I'll bring my Bible up here with me. There we go. Okay, let me look around this way. You ready? Let's read this together. Follow along as I read. Now, but we're in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger, now when they had seen him, they were they made widely known the same which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. There, folks, you have the Christmas story. Amen? I want to look at one verse out of those which we read, and that would be verse 14. And in verse 14 it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your goodness, and Father, for your mercy and love that you extend toward us daily. We thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning and your grace just abounds. And Lord, this morning, I just ask you to open our hearts to receive exactly what you have for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it has become almost cliche to say peace on earth. Every beauty pageant what do you wish for? There's always going to be at least one that will say world peace. We send out our greeting cards, which many of them have written peace on earth. And it would be wonderful to have peace on earth. As the great poet Rodney King said, people, I just want to say, can we all get along? Can we get along? And those of you that don't remember, that was back quite some time ago when there was a lot of racial tension, tension going on. And I have something to say to you, you can quote me on this, peace on earth isn't going to happen. I know that's not positive and uplifting, but it's just the truth. Peace on earth isn't going to happen. There will be wars. There will be gang violence. There will be domestic abuse. When the angels came and said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men, they were speaking of peace between God and man. They were speaking of the goodwill of God toward man. And that's really more important than having peace on the earth. Amen? Matter of fact, in Romans... Uh, Chapter 5 and verse 1, it reads there, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. 
And the message was, because God is sending His Son to die and pay for your sin, uh, to justify you, you can now have peace with God. And church, that's, that's an awesome thing to be able to have peace with God. All you have to do is place your trust in Him for salvation, to have peace with God. And it is by grace through faith that you're saved and have this peace with God. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, it reads there, And He Himself, now that's speaking of Jesus. He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, we talked about this before, but that word propitiation, that means appeaser. It means satisfier. In other words, when Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for our sin, He paid the price for sin. And God's wrath was forever settled because Jesus Christ paid the price for sin. It says not our sin only, but for the sin of the whole world. In other words, He has already paid for every single sin. You know, He doesn't pay for your sin when you come to Him. He paid for your sin before you came to Him. But when you come to Him, you're able to apply it to your life. You still have to receive Jesus, the sacrifice, the, the Lamb. You still have to receive uh, the gift of salvation that comes through His sacrifice. But He has already provided it for every single person on the face of the earth. And isn't that good news? Yes. Amen. See, He's not going to go back and die again. He died once and for all. And as we will receive that gift, we'll have His great salvation. And when we have His great salvation, we have peace with God. The purpose. Jesus came and died on the cross for us. So it wasn't saying that because Jesus came that there would be peace among men. What it's saying, what the Scripture is saying is He came to bring peace between God and man. As a matter of fact, uh, Scripture tells us He did not come to bring peace. Over in Matthew 10.34, it reads there, Do not think that, Jesus speaking, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. That kind of settles it right there, doesn't it? Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. He goes on to say that, that, that because of him, father will be against a child and husband against wife and, 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 and all these different relationships because some will decide to follow Jesus and others will become angry at them for doing so. I mean, church, we're here in America. People might make fun of us a little bit, but there are other countries when somebody makes a decision to follow Jesus, they are no longer considered a child of that father. They are they're cast away from that family because they made a decision to follow Christ. And many will be beheaded because they make a decision to follow Christ. There's much persecution going on. And that's what he's talking about. Came to bring a sword. There's going to be persecution for following the Lord Jesus Christ. Does God want peace? Yes. But He knows as long as evil exists upon the earth, there can be no peace. But we can have peace with Him. Amen? Through Jesus Christ. And also... We'll never really have peace as far as the circumstances that surround our lives. External circumstances may rise up and that are not all that pleasant. Has anybody ever had any of those? We all do, don't we? Some of you may right now be facing circumstances that, that are very uncomfortable, even hurtful and painful. <coughs> but that's what's going on around you. But even though the storm is raging around us, He's telling us that we can have peace within us. If we have peace with God, we can have the peace of God. Amen? In uh, Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God, listen to this, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Why does it surpass all understanding? Because people can look at what's going on in your life and they can think, how in the world can you have peace with all this circus going on in your life? 
No, it's because you have the peace of God. Amen. That even though things are not right around you, you know you're right with Him. And you know you have a, a solid relationship with Him. And you can have fellowship with Him. We can be like a Daniel in the lion's den. Amen. We can have peace. But we have to let it, we have to let it rain in our hearts. It's not automatic. Colossians 3.15 It says, And let, everybody say let. let. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. Again, we don't thank God for everything that goes on in our life. He doesn't expect us to. He doesn't expect you to be thankful for what the devil's doing in your life. But, even though you're facing situations and circumstances, you can still be thankful. Amen? There's always something to be thankful about. We need to focus on what we're thankful for and not at the storm that's going on around us. So how do we let the peace of God rule our hearts? We do so by renewing our minds to the Word of God. We can have internal peace in the midst of the storm as we renew our minds. To the Word of God. But the problem is with many Christians, they never even pick up the Word of God. They never even read the Word of God without alone letting it renew their mind. I mean, it needs to be a daily, uh, uh, just, I mean, not as a, as a chore, you know, not as a duty, but just as a love affair. Amen? Just taking the Word in. And as you take the Word in and meditate on the Word and study the Word, that is what's going to begin to renew your mind. Whenever that thing comes up, panic will not be the first instinct. The Word of God will become, be coming out of your mouth with power and faith. And you'll believe that which you are speaking because it's the Word of God. Amen? That's how we renew our minds. That's how we can have peace in the midst of the storm. But we have to become instrument rated. Now some of you know I did a... a several lessons on being instrument rated. For those of you that weren't here at that time, let me just kind of review that just for a moment. Matter of fact, we had Lloyd. Uh, he, he drew out a big diagram for us uh, back in the day and, and uh, talked about, I even had him talk a little bit about what it meant to be instrument rated. But certain pilots have to become instrument rated in order to fly at certain times and certain conditions. And what can happen to a pilot when they're flying they can get disoriented. It's called vertigo. And what that means is they, may, they don't go up from down. They may feel like they're going straight in their mind, but yet they may be going straight down. They may be in a storm and they can't really see to get any kind of boundaries. And so they have to learn to trust the instrument panel however they may be feeling. Even if they feel like they're going straight forward, if the instrument panel tells them they're going straight down, they have to adjust and follow the instrument panel as opposed to what their senses are telling them. And church, that's what it means to be, I call it word rated. We have to learn to trust the instrument panel. Mike, lift up that Bible there, would you? There's your instrument panel right there. The Word of God is your instrument panel. We have to learn how to trust that Word above and beyond what our senses are telling us. Because the Word of God is true. Amen? Three of you believe it. Amen? <laughs> That's what it is to be instrument rated. It isn't automatic. There's a fight to be had. You know, you don't get instrument rated just because you decide you want to be. No, you got to put it to work. Amen? you got to study to show yourselves approved unto God working that needeth not be ashamed but rightly dividing the Word of truth. You have to... Uh, to eat the Word, drink the Word, live the Word. Because you see, the Bible tells us over in Hebrews that the Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You see, we realize that it's not just a written Word, but it's a living Word. Amen? Amen. But there's a fight. First, we have to fight the enemy. Now, who's the enemy? Well, Satan is. Amen? In John 10.10, 10, it says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So we see Jesus wants us to have life. 
and more abundantly. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So we, we, have, we have to wage war against him. We have to, to fight against the enemy. In Matthew 28, 18 and 19, we have to understand we have authority over the enemy. Church, you do not have to be scared of the devil when you understand that you have authority over the enemy. Let me read that to you. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority. Everybody say that with me. All authority. How much does all include? It includes it all. Amen. Matter of fact, he goes on to say, uh, in heaven and on earth. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then he turns around and he says, go therefore. Now, in the English, if I correct, you is understood. You go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, all authority has been given unto me. Now he says, you go in that authority. You go with my authority. Amen? And we'll just look at Mark 16, 15 through 18. We'll follow up with that same thought. What does he say there? Beginning in verse 15, he says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So he says, Make disciples. He says, Preach the gospel to every creature. Then he goes on to say, He who believes in me and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, there, there, there's the authority, amen? There's the authority that he says, you go in. You go in, in my authority. You go in my name. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You see, Jesus has been given all authority. And He turns around and He says, okay, now you go in My name. In other words, you go with My authority and you cast out demons. You lay hands on the sick. You go and you do the works that I did. Because He also says, the works that I do, you shall do also and greater works than these you shall do because I go to be with the Father. So you go in My name, in My authority. You know, the... Uh, 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 Bill Gates is one of the richest guys around. If he gave me his credit card with authorization to use it, I could do a whole lot of things I can't do on my own. Amen? I mean, man, we'd be getting that carpet and we'd be having gold trim around the room. Amen? So I'd say, here. And I'd lay that card out. You see, he, he has all the resources. Amen? But he says, you go in my name. You go in my authority. And that's how we battle the enemy. It's not in our own might, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We have the spirit of God abiding in us. We have the name of Jesus and the authority that goes with it to overcome the enemy. Amen? Okay. Secondly, as I mentioned earlier, we must renew our minds, and we do that according to the Word of God. We renew our minds by the Word of God. That's how we renew our minds. We gotta, we, we're not to think like the world thinks, but we're to think according to the Word of God. We have many promises in the Word of God that we can stand on. And we need to stand on them. That's how we get our peace. Amen? In Romans 12, verse 2, it reads there, And do not be conformed to this world. You know, I see too much of that going on today. People conforming to the world. We're, you know, we're to be different than the world. We're to have a different attitude. We're to have a, a different language. We're to, we're to uh, uh, dress different. That doesn't mean we have to, you know, uh, women have to wear dresses down to their ankles. And, but, you know, there's this thing called modesty. And we're expected to follow the Word of God and dress modestly. We're expected to not let filthy communication come out of our mouths. We are expected to be careful what we let go of the eye gates. There are some things that we're to do differently because we're not conformed to this world. That doesn't get a big amen in the church today, but it's still the truth, amen? See, I said it doesn't get a big amen today. It's still the truth, though. 
Hallelujah. He goes on to say, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, how do you renew your mind? By the Word of God, which in most houses is going to half inch of dust on it. Now, I'm not saying that to be condemning. I'm just challenging you. If you want the peace of God, you need to understand it comes through reading the Word of God and then renewing your mind. It comes from spending time with the Prince of Peace. Amen? Renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In 2 Corinthians, here's what we're to do also. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Listen to what it says. You see, we, we many times just... We do not like the R word in the church today. You know what the R word is? Responsibility. We want to just say, hey, sirrah, sirrah, or however you say that, whatever will be, will be. But it's not the way it goes, amen? It doesn't just happen. We have a part to play. What is our part? Renewing our mind. 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says, Casting down. Who's doing the casting down? Who's told to cast down? We are, amen? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or the Word of God. Amen? Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So every thought that is contrary to the Word of God, we must reach out and grab that thought and bring it into obedience into the captivity of Christ. Don't just let your mind go. You know, some mistakenly believe that every thought's a sin. Every thought is not a sin. That's how the devil tempts you, by throwing thoughts your way. But what you do with that thought, do you hang on to it, or do you bring it into the obedience of Christ under His Word? That's where the sin comes in. Casting down arguments and every high... You know, there can be all kinds of arguments... Whenever you're seeking the peace of God, they can tell you all kinds of reasons you won't have the peace of God. Amen? Well, you can't have peace because look what's going on in your life. Cast that argument down. I don't care what's going on. I have peace with God and I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Devil, that's why you can't understand it. Amen? The Word of God says, let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true in every circumstance a liar. Amen? Amen? I believe the Word of God. I'm instrument rated. It doesn't matter if I feel like I'm a fallen plane wreck. It doesn't matter what's going on around. I'm standing on the promises of God. I'm counting my blessings and I'm naming them one by one. I don't care what the devil has to say. I don't care what kind of argument anybody might have tried to bring my way. I believe God and I stand upon His promises. I receive His peace that guards my heart. His peace is available for us to receive. John 14, 27. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. Listen to this. My peace I give you. I do not give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see, the world's peace depends upon what's going on around you. The world's peace you can only have when things are going right and good. But the peace that Jesus gives us, we can experience even when things are not going on around us the way we would like for them to be going on. Amen? Having peace with God qualifies us to have the peace of God. God tells us how we can have that peace. However, it's a choice that we have to make. We have a part to play in. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. It reads there, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, 
with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Why with thanksgiving? Because we pray believing we have received. Amen? You pray believing you have received. And once you pray, you need to start thanking God for the answer. You know, we don't have to beg God for the answer. We pray, we believe we receive, and we have a thankful heart. It goes on to say, verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Listen to what it will do. It will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, here's the part we can play in this. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You see, we need to think about the right things. Amen? That's why you know, that's why we get godly counsel. We don't want to listen to ungodly counsel. Because ungodly counsel will steer us in the wrong direction. Verse 9. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and listen, and the God of peace will be with you. Church, Let's remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? And that He is our peace. Realize this truth, that no matter what happens, you and God are at peace if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He loves you and He guarantees you to live forever in paradise. You had an awesome thought. Not only do we have victory now through Him, but we get to spend an eternity in paradise with Him. Church, that's something to get excited about. And among all the holiday trappings, give thanks and walk in God's peace, reaching out to those in your world. So we all have a different world, don't we? There's people that you can reach that I will never reach. There's people I can reach that you will not reach. And we need to spread the peace on our peace between God and man through the man, the God-man, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're careful to give you the praise this morning for all that you have done. And Lord, again, we are mindful that this season is a season that we celebrate the birth of Your Son. And we realize the reason that He came was to live and to die on a cross. To pay the price for our sin. That we might spend eternity with You in heaven. But also, Lord, that we might have a relationship with You here and now. And we thank You that part of the blessing of that relationship is Your peace that You offer to us. And Lord, I, I don't stand here to say it's easy, but I know it's possible because You have promised in Your Word. So Lord, I pray that You would help each and every one of us to seek to have that fellowship with You and relationship with You to have a hunger for Your Word to renew our minds <coughs> that Your peace will guard our hearts. And Lord, we're careful to give You all the praise. With every head bowed and every eye closed, just for, one, for a moment, I want to talk to You. To have that peace of God, you have to have peace with God. And you have peace with God by receiving the gift of salvation, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. And if you do not know that you have received that gift of salvation, I want to give you an opportunity right now to receive that gift. If you're not sure that you've received the gift of salvation through Jesus, I want you to simply lift your hand up 
You can put it right back down. But I want to pray with you this morning. Will there be anybody this morning? Anybody at all? So I'm not sure I had that relationship with Christ, but I want to know that I have it. Would you just lift your hands so I can pray with you? Hallelujah. Church, go ahead and look at me. There's a lot of people out there that do not know the Prince of Peace. There's a lot of people at this season that really don't have a clue to what it's really about. In a non-confrontational way, I encourage you to share the message of the birth of Christ and why He came with someone before Christmas Day. Just take that challenge. Just, just ask God to give you an opportunity. When you see that door open, just step through it. Amen. You know, we have a limited amount of time to let people know. I mean, even if Jesus doesn't come back, we, each of us, have a limited amount of time. And uh, how, how many of you know that 10 years just goes by really fast? 20 years? 50 years can just go by really fast. Before you know it, it's gone. That's why the Word of God tells us to redeem the time. Amen. Because the days are evil. The days are short. And uh, we want to be used of God to lead somebody else in the way of salvation. So uh, that would be the best Christmas gift you could give to God this year. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, He that wins souls is wise. If you want to be a wise man or woman, go tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ. Nothing to be ashamed about. Amen. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Matter of fact, if you knew where, if you got a million dollars and you knew where somebody else could go get a million dollars, you wouldn't care to tell them about that, amen? I mean, you already had your million. You can't get it, so no greed comes into play. You can't go get two million. You only get a million. And you know where it's at? Other people, friends and family and neighbors, you say, hey, I know where you get a million dollars. There's millions and millions, but we can all have a million. You'd be telling everybody you know, wouldn't you? Because you want to share that blessing. But you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the relationship that you have with Him. There's others that don't. And you can't cram it down their throat, but you can tell them, amen? You can tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, before Christmas, find someone. And if you can't bring yourself to do that, uh, say, hey, would you come visit us at Crosswalk Fellowship? Amen? And uh, we'll tell them here. I encourage you, there's no joy like telling someone and there, and there's no greater joy than seeing them respond and accept Christ as their Savior. There's just no better feeling when you look at that person and think, you were on your way to hell. But now, you're on your way to hell. Amen? And when you do that, you get a crown of rejoicing. You know what a crown of rejoicing is? Paul said, I'm going to close with this. Paul said, What's my hope? What's my crown of rejoicing? Is it not seeing you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? When you pray for somebody or gain uh, monetarily to reach somebody or whenever you sit down and led them to Christ, when you see them in heaven, you're going to say, Hey, I had a part in bringing that person to heaven. Amen? Hallelujah. That's the crown of rejoicing, isn't it? They're here. I mean, not, not prideful, but just to know that you had a part to play and bring them into the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, again, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you have given unto us. And Lord, there's no way that we could ever repay, but we just thank you that you don't ask us to. But Lord, we do want to respond um, just in ways that we can to show our love. And Lord, uh, to show our faith. And Lord, we just ask that you would guide us. And we thank you for the peace that you provide for us. And again, we're careful to give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.